Hi guys, this is a short video to explain how I build the launching wheel for my inflatable bowl. Since I have released my inflatable bowl launching video a couple months ago, I have received some messages from my viewers asking about the detail of my build. So in this video, I will share with you my build expenses. So before we get into the detail of the launching wheel itself, um, here are the tools that I use to uh, for the installation. Just simple grinder with a cutting disc, metal file to uh, you know file down the sharp edges after you cut the metal. Uh, some uh, wrench and uh, wrenches and socket, drill drill bit, and uh, a step a bit that have uh, at least all the way up to the size of five eight inch. Uh, then also the, some clock to seal some of the hole that you made on the transom. All right. Okay, let's start with the wheel. These are just 10 inch airfield uh, pneumatic uh, wheel. They're very common. You can find them in uh, any hardware store or even online. Uh, a lot of time they're used for a dolly or wheelbarrow or other utility equipment. Uh, I have one that. <laughs> Taking a part in here to show you. These wheels are uh, with ball bearing. Actually, it's very nice. I like them because they're very heavy duty. The axle is five eight inch, so I use a five eight inch bolt uh, for the axle mounting in here. Now the uh, I'm using a four inch one because um, I don't use a I don't use a knot washer. I just uh, simple line on uh, uh, anti-sleep uh, lock nut so the way they assemble it is very easy I'm just going to show you just real quick put one in put the washer put the wheel and then the nuts is just you know screw on on the outside now, 4 inch is perfect for my link in here, but if you decide to use a, a lock washer, a regular nut, you probably consider use 5 inch. It's no big deal. They're widely available in any hardware store. Next is the supporting pole or the legs. Let's talk about them. Um, these are made with uh, 1 and a quarter inch punch square tube. Uh, you will see this company used for a sign pole. I got mine from uh, Home Depot. I like these poles because it's strong and same plate make it a little, it will last a little bit longer and uh, resist to rust and these tubes already have these holes uh, in all four sides drilled in um, they actually make it lighter and easier to work with for mounting you see how it is for mounting and also to uh, enlarge the holes for uh, the axle Right here. Now, talking about enlarging the hole for the axle, and you see these holes uh, enlarged it. Uh, and I'm using one of these step bit to uh, to enlarge it with a drill. The way they do it is very easy. Actually, put a couple drop of oil when you're doing it, and just a little bit of time and drill, 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 drill for both sides. Uh, when it gets closer, you want to do a test fit to make sure that you don't over enlarge the hole. Uh, the idea is it will fit just right without taking off too much material. Um, you know, you want to stay. You want to keep as much material on the tube as possible, so to to retain the string of the tube. Okay. So uh, moving up here, um, you gotta see this is the pin that I use to uh, lock down the the pole or the leg. Uh, it is actually quarter inch with two inch long uh, pin. I added a ring here and a fishing line to tie it down here, so I'm not gonna lose it. Um, to secure and make a pivot of the pole, uh, I use five sixteen hex bolt, and the link is two inch with a lock nut and just a regular nut to secure it. Um, 
five sixteen is the how uh, the maximum size that you can go with this hose to make it more secure, and uh, you can just flip it up and down after you install it correctly. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, the length that I use is eighteen inch. Uh, the reason for it really is because um, they sell it in thirty six inch piece, so I simply just cut it in half. But just keep in mind though, uh, because we're using the pre drill the hole for mounting. Uh, so you will have to, uh, the even of the two legs is actually depend on where you mount the holes. So, for example, you screwed up and you cut this in, a, in missing one of the holes, you have to mount this in in this hole in here. That means you only have 17 of this, this, this hole on one side, but then you want to mount it in here also. On the other side, you also have to mount the same hole. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Now, of course, you know, the length is always depend on the transom of your bolt. Uh, in this case, 18 inch works just fine for me because I can just flip it up and down and all this, no problem. I have enough clearings and everything. Uh, you might need to adjust it. All right, about these bracket in here, they're actually made with one and one half inch sink plate slot angle. Uh, you can get these from, also from Home Depot or any uh, hardware store. They usually go, uh, they sell one piece as uh, 48 inch. Uh, the length that I use in here is 7.5. There's no particular reason why I picked 7.5 and all this. Mainly, is, uh, uh, I was test fit, uh, I think the whole setup, and I found that if I align the wrong hole in here, it will give me another uh, vertical. Uh, elliptical vertical slot in here that will allow me to easily align uh, with the square tube leg there, the hole here aligned so it's easier for me to put it in at the same time that if I flip it up with the up position I have also have enough clearance for me to uh, put this pin through so and that's really the reason uh, I picked the link and uh, for the hole that alignment you see they have two round holes there. Now one of the things that you gotta ask me right, maybe is, you know, this square tube is one quarter inch, and why do I need to use one half inch for this angle? Uh, one of the reasons is, if you notice, uh, the leg will need to be pivot. And when you're doing the pivoting, you want to uh, have enough clearings in here to do, allow it to go through. Uh, if I use one, Half, one quarter inch for this angle, which means this have to go lower. Uh, the mounting hole will be lower, and that means I will have to probably reduce the the gap space in here. You see how, how when I cut it, uh, in here I leave, I make sure I leave enough space so you know the structure of this tube is not compromised when it get, will go lower for mounting purpose, and that's the reason why I take one half inch in, instead of one quarter inch. And it turned out it works just well and it's nice. They got enough free plate there, there's no problem. Uh, the bracket is mounted down with 516, uh, one and a half inch long uh, hex bolt uh, with a lock nut, lock washer, and a nut. And on this side, is actually the bolt go through it, and then I put a washer. And uh, before I put the bowl and washer, actually after I drill the hole, I put the clock and material there to make sure you seal the hole. And that's why uh, you need that uh, window clock. Okay, so that's just about all the information about all the build material, dimension, and uh, size of the nuts and bolt and all this about this build. Uh, the Bill is actually it's not that difficult, it's just a lot of cutting, sanding, drilling. Uh, uh, the most uh, time consuming part that I think for me is to align the bracket and where to drill on the transom. Uh, that part, um, uh, it will be great if you have someone to help you. If not, what I did actually in my case, I taped it, some of the cardboard uh, on the transom first and then partially assembly the whole, uh, the bracket and the legs together and then I visually align and to check to make sure I have enough clearings uh, for example when the wheel coming down it will not hit the tube on the side in here 
um, all this. And then before I actually mark all the hole and drill and finish up the installation. So that's pretty much the part that uh, most taking most of the time for me. Okay, so last couple of things that I want to remind you guys about is first of all, most of the material I use to build this uh, launch wheel are not stainless and not rated for salt water. So you don't want to uh, use this to uh, in ocean water, brackish water, and salt water environment because it's gonna rust and deteriorate really quick. Uh, the other thing is, although it seems very strong, um, these designs are not for uh, high speed or on the road towing behind your car kind of application. It is really just for launching the bow and take it in and out of the water. So uh, don't do crazy thing about it. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you need to have more detail about this build, uh, you can find my blog site hypergage.com in below the video description there. Uh, I'll post a little bit more detail on my site on all the information. Hopefully it will help you to uh, build your own if you need to. Okay, thanks again for watching. Please uh, subscribe, share and like. It will really motivate me to release more interesting videos for you guys. Thanks again. See you next time.